Welcome to Late Night in Canada. I'm your host, and my name is Brittle Star. Not if you actually know me. In the news, as lockdown restrictions slowly begin to ease around the world, Canada is preparing for a potential influx of Americans coming across the border. The government says they have a plan, which is good news. But I've got a plan too. Here's what they need to do. Every American that wants to enter Canada should have to answer a number of questions correctly before they're admitted into the country. Questions like, how many minutes does this hour have? What's the last letter in the alphabet? What's a Chesterfield? Casey and? If they get those right, they've earned entry. However, it was announced today that Prime Minister Trudeau is extending the border closure between Canada and the US for another month. Or you know, maybe until November 4th. Let's just see how it goes. In a CTV News headline from BC's provincial health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry advises on kissing, dating, canoodling during pandemic. I haven't canoodled in years. She says, if you are going to start a relationship with somebody, this is not the time to do rapid serial dating. Great advice. You know, as a man of experience, I'd like to weigh in with some of my own advice as well. For example, if your romantic partner asks you to wear a face mask, that's fine. If they ask you to wear one that covers your entire face, maybe think twice about the relationship. Hand sanitizer is not body spray. Trust me. Burns. Those COVID-19 testing swabs, the long Q-tips, they should only ever go up your nose. I won't fall for that again. Finally, a couple of days ago, an Ontario teenager was caught speeding on the QEW, going, get this, 308 kilometers an hour. The 19-year-old was driving his dad's Mercedes for probably the last time ever. When the police finally pulled the speeder over, cars driving by honked and gave thumbs up in appreciation to the police for stopping the driver. Now, you can imagine driving at that kind of dangerous speed must come with some serious punishment. Now, the car was impounded for seven days and the teen's license was suspended for a week. A week! He was driving so fast that he's probably two weeks early for anything he had to do anyway. We have a great show tonight. Richard Krause is here and musical guest, McKaylin. Hey guys, our Conquer COVID t-shirts are flying off the shelves. And since time is short and these t-shirts are so fucking boring, it got us excited to expand our line of boring t-shirts to capitalize on the momentum. Now, the world's most boring t-shirt <laughs> just got a lot more exciting. In addition to the standard model, we're glad to add exciting, formal, sexy, weekend, but not the weekend, casual Friday, Netflix and chill, Ernie Coombs edition, winter, summer. What day is it? I can't feel my life. I can't feel your life. Staying in at night and my personal favorite, staying in at night. Yep. There you have it. The world's most boring t-shirt, no more. Order today, because seriously, we need PPE. Seriously, order today. Tonight's guest is basically Canada's Mr. Hollywood. He has uh, talked to and met uh, pretty much every celebrity going. He is the film critic for the nation. Can you be a film critic laureate? I think maybe it could be. If you can, maybe, you never know. The amazing Richard Krause. Richard, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me, Stuart. So listen, you've had a chance, as I said in your intro, you've like you've interviewed a tremendous number of people. And I, I always like talking to you because you and I occasionally do a panel on CTV. And uh, you're just a, 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 is it a font of knowledge? Is that what it's called? I think it might be. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, but you have so many great stories and you've met so many amazing people. 
but surely the, that whole thing, because I've met lots of amazing people as well, not as many as you, but I'm, I haven't been disappointed yet. There's only been like a couple of people I have met, some, some stars, some celebrities, who I thought, ah, I never have to meet those people again, or it's gone really terribly wrong where I've embarrassed myself. I've been lucky so far. Has it ever gone awry for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Generally speaking, it doesn't because most of these interviews, I would say that 95% of the really high profile interviews that I've done are for television. And so people are going to be nice to you if there's television cameras all over the place because <laughs> who wants that footage getting out, you know? Yeah. And there are people who are um, all business. I would say that Sally Field, despite her perky uh, persona, uh, she's all business, and right. I don't mind that. She was yeah. not friendly. She did not speak really before uh, the the interview. In fact, I sat down, and she was just like, what's your name? And then crossed me off a list. And, wow. And we on. That was the extent of our conversation. But when the conversation was happening on air, it looked great. She was right. into it, and it was fun to talk to her. Uh, ben Affleck, I wondered what I did to alienate Ben Affleck because we were in Hawaii sitting on the, the, the deck of the USS John Stennis, this giant aircraft carrier that's Amazing. like an apartment building turned over on its side. 3,000 people live in it. It's a, a, an incredible structure. And I was interviewing him on that. And I couldn't figure out why he wouldn't look at me. He kept looking around me. And I thought, did I ask him the wrong thing? Is he no longer with J-Lo? And I asked, what, what is it? And, uh, and it turns out uh, that he was playing for the camera. So when we get the footage back, he looks like a bronze god. I mean, it's right. just unbelievable. But he had no connection with me whatsoever. He just understands how to be on television. So they're not necessarily bad situations, but mm -hmm. they are kind of odd situations. Um, right. I had a very famous uh, producer one time that I was interviewing come in, and as I sat down, uh, he took a Polaroid picture of me and said, name, and wrote my name on it, and just put it on a little stack of Polaroid next to his desk, or right next to his chair. Wow. His chair was a little higher than mine, so he's kind of lowering right. over me. Yeah. And then, and this is this is my favorite thing, and I've always wanted to use it, and I never have. So he sits back, and he says, it's nice to meet you. And he goes to shake my hand, but he just does this. He just lifts his hand up. So I have to get out of my chair and go over to him to shake his hand. <laughs> It was like the ultimate power move. And <laughs> it really, if, if it wasn't so horrifying to be on the wrong end of that, I kind of loved it. I've never used it, but I've always wanted to. Now you're like a consummate professional. Like you're not going to ever break with these. Like I would have a hard time. I'd be like, nah, I think eventually I would break. And I'd be like, nah, I'm not going to stand up. I'm not, have you ever like just sort of said, nah, forget it. I'm not going to play your game. Yeah, I've cut it of you short. Um, mm -hmm. I have cut interviews short that it just weren't going anywhere. And right. I could tell that the person didn't really want to be there. Um, or something that I don't like is uh, a situation where you ask a question and then the person then asks you a question. And so you don't get an answer. And it happens a lot. Like it happens way more than you think it would. So there's been a couple of situations like that that I've just had to kind of pull the plug on them and, uh, and, and walk away. And I'm happy to do that. I mean, I can sense pretty quickly when I'm getting what I need from an interview. Right. And that's right. why I pop life on my TV show. Yeah. Uh, some of the interviews that we do for that, uh, for that first um, uh, segment, which is about 12 minutes long, some of those interviews are 40 minutes long because mm -hmm. people are used to talking in sound bites now. They're used to giving a, a, a 20 second clippable bite that you can use on, on one of the big entertainment shows. I don't use those. I don't want those. I don't want you to say things that you've said in other interviews. So I'll spend 10 minutes knocking them off those, those right. points. They tell me something I don't want to hear. I ask the question again in a different way, and I just keep working towards getting real answers from them. And once I get those, then we can continue on with the interview, and it generally tends to work out a little bit better.
Jesus. So is that why, uh, no, I was on, I think maybe the inaugural episode of Pop Life, which is a fantastic show. Uh, and you just basically learned all the things you'll never let guests do again after I was on. Is that how it happened? That's right. That's right. We, uh, you were the sacrificial lamb, the one that <laughs> caught us how not to make a TV show. No, we, we, uh, we, it has been a learning process the whole way through. Uh, it's interesting that my executive producer tells me that from, you know, the, the first show through to the last uh, several, she goes, I can see such a big difference in my style of interviewing. And I don't really see it. I've been interviewing people for 25 years, but with pop life, it is a different style than I would use elsewhere because generally speaking, they're not promotional interviews and right. we have time. We take time yeah. to actually talk about something. And I don't really want to hear about your new record. Well, right. it, but I don't really want to hear about that. And I don't really want to hear about, you know, how much fun it was on set when you were making your new movie. You right. talk to other people. Yeah, it's a fantastic show. And, uh, you know, I've certainly watched a number of episodes and it is really great to have that sort of in-depth, longer form sort of content, unlike the crap that I'm putting out right now. So. <laughs> well, there's a place for everything. <laughs> you're, you're supposed to say it's not crap, but that's fine. It's I'll not take crap. it. crap. There you sure. go. That's better. That's better. That's better. <laughs> you can add yeah. that. You can add that. <laughs> So listen, thank you so much for joining us. I greatly appreciate your time. As always, it's a fantastic time chatting with you. And I hope you're keeping well. And uh, I'm sure we'll be able to see you. Pop Life episodes still popping up on CTV. Is that correct? Yeah, Pop Life is still all over the place uh, in reruns. Uh, my web series, uh, In Isolation With, has some cool episodes coming up. with uh, fantastic, fantastic as well. well. Yeah, Kathy Reichs, uh, the writer of the Bones uh, books, is up there. Uh, we've got Rob Bryden from uh, the Trips movies coming up soon. Uh, lots of cool people coming on that I show. Know. So uh, lots of fun conversation there. And they can find that on YouTube and elsewhere, is that correct? Yeah, and it's ctvnews.ca. Awesome. Thanks so much, Richard. I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, no problem, Stuart. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back. Promotional consideration for Late Night in Canada is brought to you by Social Media North, presented by Club Coffee. Social Media North, an online social media convention, so you don't have to smell anyone. All the way from Guelph, Ontario, ladies and gentlemen, McKaylin.
Thank you so much for watching Late Night in Canada. Like, share, and tell all your friends. Good night.